Good morning. Um, I'm I'm gonna do a recorded video, so I won't so I can stay focused and intentional on this message that is deeply deeply on my heart. Um, it has been for a long time during this pandemic, and I have understood um, what I'm about to talk about. I've understood it much of my life. Uh, especially in the last four or five years uh, for or even longer. Do you know when we get um, distracted and what happens? We, we kind of just veer way out there by being led by something that um, takes us away from dependency upon God, upon uh, takes us away from faith, takes us away from intimacy because we have allowed the distractions to take us away and uh jesus said uh you know you're in the world but you're not of it i'm calling you out you know um if i want to if i personally want to be effective um in in the culture today uh if i want to be a mouthpiece for the lord if i want to bring others to christ if i want to serve others whatever i want to do in the name of the lord <clears throat> he's got to be my source and my sustenance for me to be effective, right? How many would say right now that there's a mountain of distractions going on? So many things that we could be distracted by. And maybe you are distracted right now. Uh, but God wants to pull you right back. Um, so... Last Saturday, I did the message that the Lord put on my heart about the vision board. Write the vision and make it clear. Put your photo in the middle of the vision board um, and then hear from the Lord while you're in this secret place and write down the words that he's telling you, the preparations that he wants you to make within your heart by, by leaning and trusting and relying on him and what is he saying to you. Um, sometimes we need to hear the Lord. I love you, child. Uh, you are my treasured possession. You are valuable to me. I love you with an everlasting love. Sometimes that's what we need to hear in order to be prepared for things to come. I was looking up the in Psalms this morning, and Psalms is a magnificent place to be right now. Okay. Also, Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 through 7. The teachings of Jesus, um, you know, pray for those who persecute you. A lot of people right now are so distracted by what the government is doing in their community and in their state. When we as believers aren't called to become distracted by that. Now, some of you, there's going to be a time and a season he may call you to be a voice out there absolutely a hundred percent i'm all that's all i i i love that but make sure it's god calling you not pride not fear not ego not anything else not caught up in emotions and knee-jerk reactions make sure it's god calling you out there to be to be that mouthpiece to stand for righteousness, and we can stand for righteousness just as powerfully in our secret place as we can be in a, a, a vessel that he sets out in public view. And he'll do that. He can do that. But as I was going through the book of Psalms and I was talking, I was looking for um, the, the, um, the desires of my heart. If I, if I delight myself in the Lord, and that's found in Psalms 37. Um, if I delight myself in the Lord, he will fulfill me. He will give me the desires of my heart. And um, I was very deliberate this morning in hearing the Lord. I, that's my, that is my greatest desire. And I'm so, I'm so sad about all the tragedies on our earth. Um, I also know that God spoke to me a few weeks back and said, um, I'm sequestering my church. And when I... I heard that from the Father. I heard that through his Holy Spirit, that still small voice. I'm sequestering my church. It changed everything for me. It took my focus off of um, 
being upset, being, you know, okay, what's going on? I wasn't confused about so much about what's going on because I have felt God's hand on this from the very beginning. Nothing takes him by surprise. But when I, when I, my, I laid down those frustrations, it was like a period of grieving. You know, you go through different stages. When the Lord did some different stages in my heart big time. And towards the end of those stages, right at that point, he said, I'm sequestering my church. I want to be with my church. That changed everything. It took the focus off of government, off of the medical professionals, off of insecurities, of all this upheaval. He wants to be with us. There's things he needs to prepare us for. He's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. So it's not talking about these wrinkles. It's talking about the stuff that's in my heart. So anyway. I read the desires of my heart in Psalms about um, if I delight myself in him, if he is my source and sustenance, he'll fulfill me. That's throughout the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. The, 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 the provision will be from him. Every provision that I need, emotional, financial, um, spiritual, if I'm if I'm just that little trusting kid that says, Papa, oh, I need you, I need you, I need you, draw me close. He says, draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. He's such a good Papa. So I was flipping through in Psalms, and this jumped out. And my, my Bible has got, <laughs> it's pretty worn, and I'm grateful for that. Um... This is where I found my solution for everything. <laughs> okay, Psalms 33, starting in verse 18 through 22. This is, as I was going through, this is what leapt off the page. And it was like, oh my gosh, because I've been so really trying to be intentional about the secret place and about meeting with him. And I've got morning hair. But I did put lipstick on and a little stuff here so I would be not so hard to listen to. <laughs> Psalms 33, 18 through 22. I read in the Amplified, okay? Behold, the Lord's eye is upon those who fear him, who revere and worship him with awe who wait for him and hope in his mercy and loving kindness to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. Our inner selves wait earnestly for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For in him does our heart rejoice because we have trusted and relied and been confident in his holy name, let your mercy and loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us in proportion to our waiting and hoping for you. The last verse, verse 22, is like, are, let me read that a few dozen times. Let me get that deep within. He says, for your let your mercy and loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us in proportion to our waiting and hoping for you. In, in proportion. And it's so true. If I have 90% of myself in the world and 10% in the things of God and in the Lord, how much peace am I going to be filled up with? How much inner strength will I have if I give him 25% and 75% is being filled up with government and, and, and my security is found in other things? How much peace will I have? How effective will I be? How healthy will I be if I give him 
in proportion. His mercy and loving kindness comes back to me in proportion to how much I give him. If I give him 100%. There's been times in my life that I have total had to be totally dependent on him for everything. And those were some of those indeed are the most precious times. He's calling a lot of us into fasting right now where the total dependency is upon him when you fast. So go with that. If he's calling you to fast, he, he'll give you the grace to do it. But be in the secret place. Don't stay busy about the things of the world or just staying a distracted. Those are, those are things right now that, oh man, to be led astray right now and to not be focused and intentional and to be filled up in the secret place. The, the, the greatest, the, the, you know, there's, there's places where the enemy can come in and distract. But when you're in the secret place, the enemy can't get in there. Also, too, that place of surrender. A wonderful saint of the Lord told me, the most powerful weapon I will ever have is surrender to God. Because the enemy can't get in the place of surrender. It is the most powerful place. So surrender to the Lord. Be filled with the things of the Lord. Be careful of distractions because they come in many forms. They can come in wonderful friendships. They can come in wonderful uh, uh, wonderful things. But they can also come in in terrible things. So so be very, very careful because those distractions are going to pull you away. And and we can't afford to be pulled away. We, I can't afford to be pulled away. Verse 22, I'll read it one more time. Let your mercy and loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us in proportion to our waiting and hoping for you. Whatever you have to do, do it. Whatever you have to do to lay down the distractions and find that time with him, that pure devotion, pure devotion, pure, pure. He doesn't want your prayer list. He knows what you need before you ask. He wants your heart. He wants communion with us. So, let me just pray with you right now. That's that's just what I was led to bring this message. Um, fight your battles on your knees. Don't get tangled up with what you see right now. Don't do it. He needs you prepared for things to come. He needs you to be saturated with his Holy Spirit so you will be effective. That you will finish the race. You, We must be. We must be. I must be the wise a virgin filled with the oil, not scrambling around trying to find someone else's oil. Got it? I know you guys know what I'm talking about. I know there's a lot of yes and amen going on right now. I'm not the only one. Okay. Lord, thank you that you don't let us stray with distractions before you give us that little yank back. Say, where are you going, little lamb? Come back. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, God. I pray for my friends that are listening right now, Lord God, that they would come back to being intentional about you and for you and with you, that their dependency would be upon you and no one else, nothing else, no thing, that we would have the grace to lay down the things that have weighed us down. That we would be able to see you, hear you, be with you, and be filled with you. Lord, your word says in the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, Lord, that he who is one with the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. Father God, that's what we want. We want to be one with you. We don't want to, know, we want to have our spirit just so intertwined with you. We don't know where our spirit leaves off and yours begins. So, Papa God, make us effective between you and me and us first. Between them and you first is our greatest, our greatest effectiveness. We want to be wholly yours, fully yours, Lord. Help us, God. Help us, Lord. Give us the grace, God, 
and increase our faith, Father God, and increase our willingness, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for us, because you will provide, Father God, manna from heaven, whatever you need to do to provide for us. Give us the ability to wait. Give us the ability to give you 100% so we can receive 100%. We love you, Father. I bless my friends. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you.